Hey guys, guess where I'm at today? You guessed it, I'm not in Canada. So one of the favorite things that I get to do as a dog trainer is upgrade my skills. It's never fun to be always the biggest fish in a small pond. Well, I guess maybe it's fun for some people, but it's not fun for me. Um, and I always like to upgrade my skills or have someone that has a lot of experience, you know, put their critical eye on what I, what it is I'm doing with my dogs. So I'm out at something that I do every, I would say, three to four times a year um, with my dogs. And that is uh, workshops and seminars where I go to, you know, uh, a uh, accomplished trainer's workshop or seminar and um, pick up what I can and, you know, have them take a critical look at what it is I'm doing and maybe uh, adjust fire depending on, you know, what it is that, uh, you know, they think and what they say. And I really enjoy doing that as a professional dog trainer that is still, to this day, one of my most favorite things to do. Um, but yeah, so I'm out here in uh, Ohio and I'm going to a workshop with... Uh, Stefan, uh, St uh, Stefan Schaub, who is a uh, trainer and breeder from Germany. Uh, he runs the uh, Wanderstaatsmarkt, which is a, a pretty well-known uh, uh, German Shepherd kennel. Anyways, I'm here with a couple of my friends, and um, you know we've got uh, we've got a truck, we've got a dog trailer. You guys can see that all the dogs are in there, and um, yeah, one of uh, I go usually with a couple of buddies, and we go and enjoy training so on and so forth i have a small training group that comes and trains with me and we like to go to these workshops from time to time some of you guys are going to ask the rig so this is actually carson's rig <laughs> carson's one of my buddies so um he's got the dog trailer i have a wt metal he's got the new met box dog trailer they're kind of very similar i mean obviously his is a lot newer more modern so it's got you know the leds and all that kind of stuff the great thing about and then you know, he's got the, the Dodge Ram. I'm in a Yukon now, so, because I got too many kids, but uh, he gets to still drive a pickup truck. And he's got the dog box in the back. I love this kind of setup because um, it's all weather, basically. I mean, maybe if you went down to Florida, you'd need to do something a little more than that. But, you know, if you see um, these boxes, these are all insulated. So, you know, I'm sure you guys can see the straw here. I'm going to open Yaxi's box shortly. And, um... One thing you'll see is super warm, right? Like when you put your hand in there, it's like a nice, warm, um, like the dogs are nice and warm, um, you know. It, and then in the summertime, that insulation works the other way. It keeps them nice and cool. And then there's a, there's a cooling fan. You guys can't quite see it there. Let me see if I can open this or is it locked? Oh, they locked the top. Let me see if I can unlock the top. There's Carson all the way out there with his asshat Vasco. <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, so there's a cooling fan here that sucks all the hot air out. So it's these are pretty cool trailers. You can only get them uh, in Europe right now. I know that um, the Americans make uh, like Ainsley and they make some some dog trailer dog stuff for bird dogs, but it tends to be really heavy duty, like in terms of like really heavy. You know, they a lot of metal and aluminum and stuff like that. So they're not as lightweight. These things are so lightweight, you can pull these with like a Hyundai, you know, two-door sedan. So there's Gagey. A little bit of a different vibe than uh, Yaxi, as you can see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's Gage. So it was unlocked. All right, guys. So that's what the top of the dog trailer, well, a modern dog trailer looks like. I mean, Carson just got this thing, so it's pretty nice. Um, so you got stuff for, you know, you can see where the fans are. You know, they got the lights, and there's temperature in there, so you can see what the temperature is, and, you know, all that type of stuff. So, Anyways, for those of you wondering how we travel with five or six dogs, this is how it's done. All right, we're feeding these guys. For those of you asking, Royal Cannon is what I feed. Put a little water in it, throw it in the box with the dog, and that's breakfast with a little bit of hydration. Oh look, there's Carson. We're vlogging. 
I never vlog on road trips. I said, you know, Gage, where's he going? Gage, come here. He just goes. He just takes off, like one direction, just full speed ahead. No reason, he just goes. What are you eating? Oh, a banana. It's a nice little uh, bar they got there. Yeah, it's like the nicest Best Western. <laughs> is it a Best Western? What is it called? It's a... Uh, something Express. Something Express. It's nice. Yeah. Usually these are not so nice, but this is nice. Come here, Gage. Kennel up. There you go. Road trip, 2023. There's Yaxi going for his morning potty break. Hey, Yaxi, come say hi to everybody. There you are. You big puppy. You big silly puppy. Yeah, you're a big silly puppy. Whoa, you almost got the phone. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to talk over some of this footage. This is Grim von der Staatsmacht. This is Paul, my buddy Paul's dog. Full brother to the dog that I have named Glitzy von der Staatsmacht. So here he's doing some protection with his breeder, Stefan. And here I think they're doing just a little bit of transition work. Paul's doing some dumbbells here with Grim. He just started the dumbbells. And here's Grim doing some protection work. Paul almost got killed here. <laughs> he was dying. Sent him for his first bark and hold here loose. It went very well. One thing I really like about Grim, other than how uh, pretty he is, is the grips. He has such fantastic grips as a lot of von der Staatsmacht dogs do. First outs, you can see that. And he came out a little angry. This dog has matured really nicely. So this is Yaxi, guys. I just had a little footage of Yaxi, even though he really did great on this uh, workshop. Um, as you can see, the barking's coming along very nicely with Yaxi here. He makes super transitions. He always has really nice grips. I think Stefan liked Yaxi. There's a fair bit of Staatsmark blood actually on both sides of Yaxi's pedigree, along with some other dogs. You guys can check it out if you want. So here's Gage. Just doing some obedience. Again, getting ready for the upcoming trial season. Stefan was great help here. Just giving me guidance here and there to improve various things. Some protection with Gage, again, just working on refining a lot of what's already there. You might be able to say some negative things about the dog, but you surely uh, can't complain about his barking. He has really nice barking. Doing some escapes here with Stefan. Really, really happy with how the grip and the escape has come along. Um, and the, the good behavior the dog shows on the grip here in the escape. Nice. We really worked a lot on this, getting the dog to get behind the helper. Not just in this seminar, but in, in all his development.
doing some back transport here. I think for me, this is one of his strongest exercises. <laughs> Watch him uh, have a little bobble at the upcoming trial just because I said that. Just working on getting him a little bit more to the middle. Sometimes he barks a little bit over to the elbow there, so Stefan's just helping him stay in the middle there. Nice. And just helping him with that transition, making the miss, building some more expectation. So back to obedience. Okay guys, so this is Carson's dog Vasco Von Kletel. You guys have seen Vasco all over this channel, you know how much I love this dog. So Vasco got to meet Stefan, and uh, Stefan really provided some nice little tools to uh, refine what we're doing with this dog. Just in the secondary control, which is the thing that we're really working a lot on with Vasco here. And just getting this dog to the point where he can be uh, reliable or as reliable as we can get him in a trial where he's not going to go out of control and he's going to stay with the handler and, and, and get through the whole routine because as you guys know on his last one there was a no out situation Carson and Vasco really had a good time on this seminar It's all about making functional progress and, and, and having a good plan moving forward for what exactly we're going to do to maximize the, the potential for success of the dog and the handler. And again, Stefan was very helpful with that. Stefan's really good with these types of dogs. Um, you know, he, he provided, like I said, some really good solutions to uh, some things that we were working on. See, uh, Vasco got a little upset with this out. When Vasco's barking in front of you, you really feel it. And this is the last dog we're going to show here. This is... Lucifero Vicker. This is Carson's dog. This is actually the other dog I imported with Yaxi. And uh, he is a really fast little dog. You guys are going to see more of Pharaoh soon. We've been working on a few things. And uh, you guys will be seeing him more soon on the channel. Carson.
Okay, guys, let's talk about seminars and workshops before we wrap up here. First of all, before I get into this, I would like to thank Barb and Dan Osterreker for hosting uh, this workshop with Stefan and opening their home to us. Um, it was fantastic. Barb serves a fantastic lunch if you ever go to her workshops. Um, with Stefan, I strongly suggest that uh, uh, you hit them up and, and uh, you know, she makes a fantastic lunch and she's super welcoming and Dan's an awesome guy too. And then, of course, Stefan... Um, Stefan is a, a you know fantastic trainer. I've talked about him a lot before, and, and you know what I think about his breeding program. You know I have dogs um, that have his lines and and so on and so forth. You know I'm gonna sit down hopefully with Stefan at some point soon if he's willing, of course. And we're going to talk about all things training and breeding. Um, this workshop, of course, he was super busy and I know he was tired from all the training he was doing. So I didn't want to bother him this time. Um, hopefully next time. I'd like to have him out to my place again, as you guys may know, may or may not know. I did have him out to my place, um, was it a, year, a couple of years ago? And um, now that we have a nice new facility here, I'd like to have him out again because uh, having a seminar will be a lot more comfortable and convenient for everybody. Uh, that being said, let's talk about seminars and workshops. So I think a lot of trainers, especially once you get to a certain level, you're kind of almost, I, I see a lot of trainers, they're almost embarrassed to admit that they learned something from somebody because they kind of reach this point where like they're this all-knowing, you know, guru or god to their followers. And I've never claimed to be that guy. Um, you know, I really am, I, I never hide that I go and I learn things from a lot of different people and I will continue to do so as long as I'm involved in dogs. I can't imagine anything more boring than not having anything more to learn or, 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 or any more tricks or tips to pick up, any way to expedite the things that I'm already doing. So um, it's important, of course, to always, uh, to always seek to further yourself and to further your knowledge. Here's the other thing that I want to say. A lot of people, this is the mistake I think a lot of people do with seminars and workshops is they're a lost little bird and they're, they're looking for a nest. And they fly from seminar to seminar to workshop to workshop, just looking for some, you know, guru to guide them to the promised land. And inevitably, it's just a failure all the time because they just, they change, they're constantly changing everything. I don't change everything I'm doing. I actually have a direction that I'm going. Um, me and my little training group, we have a foundation of where we're going and what we're doing. And uh, we believe in that. And what we're looking for in seminars and workshops is an expedi ex expedition of what we're doing. Because there's always a better way. There's always a little thing that maybe you could change. You know, maybe you guys saw I was working on the sit in motion. My sit in motion has always been something I struggled a little bit with, with um, Gage. Um, and uh, it's always been a little bit slower than I would like. And uh, Stefan had some fantastic tips for how to speed that up. And that's just one example, you know, when you go and you work with an accomplished trainer that is has 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 helped a lot of people in in that specific um, area that you're working in they'll always have something that you can take even if you don't take it for your dog you're going to take it for another dog maybe that you work with i took things i know away from this seminar that i'm going to use even if not with my dogs with another dog that i'm training or, or with another person that I'm, I'm i'm helping or coaching in the future so it's really really important um you know the one thing i will say about this seminar is it really clicked with what me and uh, carson and paul are already doing um, it, it clicked like the, the things that, uh, you know, Stefan does really clicked already with the, the system and the, and the direction that we're going. And it really worked very well. There's a lot of accomplished trainers, you know, very successful trainers. Maybe they're doing something completely, completely different. And their system of communication with the dog is, is, is just ra so radically different than the system that we've established with our dogs that maybe if we went and, and trained with them, it wouldn't work out so well. But with Stefan, he kind of really met us where we were at and just pushed us a little bit further down the road so it was really good for us um you know i guess my point is don't be a lost little bird you know i'm not saying you shouldn't go to a seminar if you don't know anything for sure you should but don't always go looking for your next guru you should you know commit to something right there's a lot of different roads to roam there's a lot of different trainers a lot of different methods pick a trainer that's successful and commit to that process with them. And then, you know, once you've established a strong and firm base of knowledge and you've really committed to that system and you've done a lot in that system, you've trialed maybe a couple of dogs, then go to other systems and learn from them. But don't learn from them with the idea that you're going to throw everything out and just completely take something on that's new because that's not going to be good for you or for your dog. Okay, guys, so I'd like to wrap this up once again. Uh, I hope I made myself clear in relationship to workshops. Danny, why don't you just be in the video? Why don't you just be in the video? Look at you. Daddy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, guys, so I hope I've made myself clear in relation to workshops and seminars. 
Um, I think a very valuable resource um, that all professional trainers and hobbyists should certainly take advantage of if they can and ensuring that you have a, a solid foundation and a direction that you're heading in. You know, I see a lot of people show up to these things and they're like, dog knows nothing and they know nothing. And maybe that's fine to do once or twice, but like you don't want to continuously do that and you're just working on, you know, the basic fundamentals that you should have already taken care of had you been sufficiently motivated um, to do so. And I see a lot of people, it's like, you don't need to come to a seminar for this work. This is something that you should have already done on your own. And, um, you know, so I strongly suggest, uh, you know, make the trainer's life easier, make your life easier, you know, get the most you can out of it by, by, by doing your homework, doing your work. I know, man, what are you doing? You guys remember Dan, eh? He was, uh, he was the baby I used in the dogs and baby video on my Instagram. So he's a little bit bigger now. As you guys can see, he's walking around. Anyways, guys, um, I'll, be, uh, I'll, be, I'll be on here again soon. But uh, just a little update on, on what we've been up to here. And uh, nice talking to you all. Oh, I guess I should mention No Nonsense Dog Training. Check out the book. Um, so far, it's getting really good reviews. People are really enjoying it. Um, if you want to check out our online training, shieldk9.ca, uh, and you can see our online training. Man, I'm really bad at doing these like promotional things, but uh, hey, it is what it is, I guess.